say about us You can laugh at our courage Take this much To have and to hold Continue to climb The hundreds more just like us This is a continuation of the Games of Distinction series posted earlier in my channel and linked over on the right. If you haven't checked it out, please take a gander because I'm going to be referring to concepts introduced there quite heavily as I proceed. Having recognized some of the problems inherent in quantification, we must, going forward, recognize what quantification truly represents that being the simplest of the mechanisms by which we seek a pattern. Problems of representation are another order of question entirely, and while we will be getting into that at some point, we're going to set it aside for the time being. Let us say first that we are concerned with a sequence of events which we represent thus. A pattern to this chain of events is quite evident. Note that here we are describing a chain of events as each possessing of a single property. Note that here we are only concerned with a single descriptor for each event. Let us say that we are considering our columns, events, and our rows properties of a given event. Note that again, taken row by row, a pattern is evident. There is an evident pattern in the first row. There is an evident pattern in the second row. But already we have complicated our pattern. Our simple pattern of alternating properties and our subsidiary pattern of full alternation wherein we have two black, two white, considered as whole taken from the column perspective is considerably more complicated because here we have white, black, 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 white, white, black, white. A pattern is still evident, and a pattern can still be intelligibly described. The pattern that we now have is, however, considerably more complicated than the one that we began with. Let us consider a third order of properties for these events. pattern is, again, still evident. But note what you do as you observe the problem as a totality and how this enables you to recognize a pattern. Well, the visual representation of the pattern that is present is relatively simple. The mathematical representation of this pattern would be somewhat more complicated. The real problem posed by this mechanism of representation may be expressed by the addition of a single piece. What would be the correct secondary properties for these two pieces? What placement or arrangement of pieces in those empty spaces would allow for preservation of the pattern as it has been defined thus far? We have, so far, observed two possible sets of secondary properties for a black piece in the first row. Note that with either of these arrangements, the original simple visual pattern that we created is no longer preserved or is modified to the point that qualifiers must be added. We would need to presuppose 
the presence of an additional piece in order to preserve the pattern in either way. But the presence of this piece does not necessarily grant the presence of this one. Consider the possible placement of this piece in that position. Look elsewhere in our pattern for precedent. If we assume relative homogeneity within our pattern and that we can take our positional cues for what would surround these pieces by that which surrounds these, we would fill in the pattern thus. But note that we lack any definition or reference by which we could imply or assert piece positions for these two locations. And note already what has happened to our earlier visual representation of the pattern. Further preservation of the pattern would require us to surmise that this space has allowable values, that being that we can place pieces there. If we can, then we may further reciprocate our pattern. However, if we cannot, then our pattern has reached a terminus were we to continue this further and allow these pieces to act as our precedent for placement to the right of these pieces. We have, at this point, exhausted the possibilities of our first order pattern, that being those precedents which were affirmed in the original placement of our pieces. If we allow our implications, our inductions regarding the placement of further pieces to themselves act as precedent, then we can extend the pattern without limit. Should we find that our additional piece, our additional column, contains properties as thus, and we observe that there is an event with unobserved secondary properties, we can proceed with no real certainty. At this point, the precedented patterns for the secondary properties of this piece would be thus. Note that each of these has a radically different impact on how we perceive the pattern as a whole. And there is yet one unprecedented property possible. Note here that the possible piece arrangement for which we have no prior precedent is the one which best preserves an easily recognizable visual pattern. 